As you pointed out in your notes to us, we've had nine rounds of UN sanctions since 2006. We've had, you know, we've been here before, albeit not with a sitting US president. But how much are you tempering your expectations going into the summit? No, I think, Heidi, it's the right question. And it's a bit of Groundhog Day, Groundhog Day for people who've spent their careers in this space. There's been a number of attempts over the years to try and push North Korea towards denuclearizing, towards having a deal on the table. But I think any sort of uh, tangible movement in the positive steps will be just the opening of a discussion, because obviously this is a regime that spent many years building up its nuclear weapons capability. To give them up just as quickly is somewhat unlikely. Dan, I want to throw up this quick chart for our viewers just to point out how we have had some exuberance in some parts of the market. Clearly, there is some expectation or hope that if this is a success successful conversation, if sanctions are eased and there's going to be business opportunities going to the north, this is a chart showing that Korean uh, builders, so construction, steel, utilities type industries have been surging while the broader KOSPI has been uh, pretty lacklustre over the past month. And that all kind of came after Kim said in that second meeting with Moon, that key infrastructure in the north really needs upgrading. Do you think investors are getting a little bit ahead of themselves? And how long would you predict, once sanctions are lifted, that you actually see, you know, some sort of pent-up flow of business coming through? Yeah, I think investors are definitely getting a bit ahead of themselves. I mean, if you actually look at the outcome of the Iran deal, sanctions relief doesn't necessarily force business to come flooding back in. Even if sanctions are ultimately lifted on North Korea as a result of this dialogue, Businesses and most critically important banks won't likely pick up the activity for fear of retaliation from the U.S. regulatory regime. So I wouldn't expect to see any sort of significant sanctions easing in the near term. Ironically, if any sort of relief is to come, it's likely going to follow the model of the Iran deal itself, the deal that's been castigated as the worst deal ever for the longest time, which forced the Iranian regime for concrete commitments up front in return for relief uh, once that commitment has been verified. Dan, I'm just curious from, I guess, a logistics, a legal jurisdictional point of view, how complicated will the process be of unwinding sanctions and building the, the infrastructure needed for, for business to occur? Yeah, I think the first step would involve presidential executive order to begin to enable the mechanism for the government to wind back the sanctions that have been in place. You also have to remember that there's a fairly significant multilateral sanctions package through the United Nations, which would also have to be unwound. It's certainly not just sitting in the United States as well. So once those regulations uh, begin being wound back, you begin to lay the groundwork for business to re-enter. But again, you would likely see it in a measured approach, something like humanitarian food and food aid to be the first to go. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily see large consumer retail companies being the first on the ground.